Okay, so <clears throat> this is an ephod, and as you can see, one of the stones is missing. And it's in the corner. So let's see here. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness, and you will acknowledge the Lord. In that day I will respond, declares the Lord. I will respond to the skies, and they will respond to the earth, and the earth will respond to the grain, the new wine and the olive oil. And they will respond to Jezreel. I will plant her for myself in the land. I will show my love to the one I called, not my loved one. I will say to those called, not my people, you are my people. And they will say, one of the things that, um, exactly was very making sure I'm getting the words right from the spirit like I always do there she will respond as in the days of her youth as in the day she came up out of Egypt in that day declares the Lord you will call me my husband you will no longer call me my master. So, <clears throat> I rejoice at that. That's the type of rain I've always wanted. Now, one of the biggest things that impacted my public ministry was he does not honor his mother and father. That was a big split in my family and other families. Huge debates around that commandment. And the biggest thing about it was I had to answer to that. <clears throat> and my answer was, who is my mother? So a lot of times when I'm answering, it's not the words the meaning is more important. So I had to teach in teaspoons by example what I was saying is your dedication to the first commandment fulfills all ten. And then I was not and still am not concerned with man-made human laws. <clears throat> But that was the biggest thing that my parental figures that were chosen by me could not get past. They were always like, he doesn't do what we say. He's always telling us that God told him to do this, God told him to do that, and that's why he did it. And there was a huge communication barrier between um, me and a lot of people because to them I looked insane. But I was learning every single day. And my story has always been a boy and his God. And I couldn't understand why people had such a problem with that. I was like, I'm not hurting anybody. In fact, I'm doing the exact opposite. Why do you keep... So that's where the whole who is my mother thing came from that, that hurt her feelings. But <clears throat> if someone was not obeying God, and I'm like this to this day, 
then my mentality has always been like, who are you? And because when I, whenever I was listening to someone, if it wasn't God speaking through them, I completely disregarded it. And this was very difficult for me at first because I had the law, I had teachers of the law telling me one thing and then I was getting confirmation of something that was different. And I finally just spent a lot of time by myself. The spirit was basically like, come over here, walk with me. And that's what I did. And I learned all kinds of things. So I wanted to teach this freedom from man-made evil things to love. The truth. And then the spirit through me developed the way. And I taught what the spirit taught me. And that's what I teach and I've always taught. Because there was so much in the law, and by that I mean the oral law and the Levitical priesthood. And I knew about um, Melchizedek and I was teaching a lot of people that hadn't had the opportunity to read or really be spoken to about God. Same thing I do to this day. Because the freedom comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you want to say back then, freedom came from understanding it gave hope in hopeless times. And it was, and still is, a freedom from sin. I learned that all of the things that people did were provoked by the emotions that they felt at the moment. So freedom was freedom from yourself that you continuously do things to cause your own destruction. And that was the bondage. That everything visually seen meant nothing. And I'll constantly be in my own little world and then I would invite people to join me. And I was like, look how beautiful this is. Look at this and look at this. And I was literally in a different realm and then I pull people into it and that's one thing that's frustrated me about my churches I'm like you guys are nuts and I know it I don't know why you're trying to pretend like you're not <laughs> I was like we we are a fierce people we would love this whole entire earth into submission And I've been frustrated with my people because they've adopted this paradigm. And I'm like, that's not who you are. That's not who we are. We dance. We worship God. We, we are insane. We are the right kind of sanity. The light of the world. <clears throat> the first commandment love the Lord your God with all your heart all your mind all your soul is obedience which I translated for people 
in a way they could understand. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And all these things added to you actually means a whole bunch of different things. It means possessions, it means people, it means restoration of relationships, it means restoration of you, it means it fulfills the law. You are walking in the law. That's grace. Through the Holy Spirit, you have the ability to fulfill the law. Before you didn't. Before there had to be a high priest, which still is me, but <clears throat> before you had to find out if God was happy with you or not happy with you through people. Now you can go right into the throne room. You can go right into the Holy of Holies, sit down, speak and be heard. I wanted everybody to understand how loved they are. So a lot of times <clears throat> when I was praying to God, I wanted to do what my parents wanted me to do. So it became a mercy and grace when God allowed me to do what they wanted me to do. I never wanted to hurt anybody. But my first allegiance is and always will be to God. That's the example I've always once set, and that's the example I've always set. That regardless of what is going on, I do and say what God tells me to.